so the first thing we're doing is we're sort of breaking the rules as far as what our thumb and fingers can do with the right hand. But check out the left hand a minute. Here's our first chord. This little shape, ring finger here, 12th fret, 4th string. Middle finger here, 11th fret, 3rd string. First finger here, 10th fret, 2nd string. It might be useful just for this first chord to look at both hands. Because the thing is, this actually repeats four times. And then the shape is going to move. And it's that final note that gets left out, which allows the whole thing to work. So let's talk specifically about what's happening. So here's that shape. I'm playing with the thumb here, and there's zero palm muting for this. It's kind of refreshing to play a finger style where there's no palm muting. I'm playing a stroke on the fourth string with the thumb, plucking the second string with the index, then I'm playing the third string with the thumb, and then the thinnest string with the middle finger. And that's going to persist. Like I said, we do that four times. However, the last time we go. So pay attention to the subtle muting and pay attention to the note being left out. still see both hands on camera here. That's the ring finger now being at the 7th fret. Middle finger here, 6th fret, 3rd string. First finger, 5th fret, 2nd string. the same. Picture that hand remaining the same. Now moving once again. Now you would have thought it could all stay so simple that we have to slightly make things a little harder. Ring finger moves to the 5th fret, 5th string. Middle finger moves to the 4th fret, 4th string. For this entire lesson, index finger remains where it is. Now check this out, because now also our right hand has to adapt. We're now playing the thinnest string now is left out. Our pattern is the same, but now our thumb is playing the fifth string. Our index is playing the third string. Thumb on the fourth now. Middle finger on the second. So how does that piece together? Say we're back here again. Starting off with the previous way. moves, this moves. You have to be conscious of where you're picking from now. See? And then when you're ready to start from where you initially started, you're going to make a huge move all the way to landing to where the ring finger is on the 12th fret. So that's a little challenge of landing accurately, right? But you can create a pattern like this by leaving space in this way. Leaving out that last note allows the fingers to move. However, your fingers in general are not going flying way off the fretboard. Your, and like I said, your index is general, generally remaining the same. 
so your fingers are not flying off the strings. Now there's subtle muting going on. And I explained to you the slight difference of where these fingers move. Um, if I wanted to show you this more real quick. So say you're starting out here, plucking from the fourth string. Well, this version, you would start with this. And I'm going to include a slowed down demonstration. I'll just slow it down using the phone. And maybe I'll even include a speed it up. If, but uh, the index finger does remain down for this entire video. Now let's just talk about a little bit of music theory. Because I am this is a video of how to create a finger picking pattern on acoustic guitar for a beginner. So you're going to want to know a little bit deeper, right? So let's, let's say you have your ring finger here, 12th fret, fourth string, then your middle, then your index, like I explained already, right? So you're strumming that with your thumb. What have you got there? You have a version of a D chord. Now your whole D major and so on, all this, gets a little complicated with these first, with these open strings ringing out. So you don't need to get too tied down to the music theory, but I want you to know that you have a version of a D chord. What happens when you move your ring to the seventh fret, for example? So you got five, six, seven, right? Seventh fret. Now you're playing a version of an A chord. What happens when your ring goes all the way to the fifth fret? Now you're playing a version of a G. Now here's the thing. I showed you something you have to do where you move these fingers towards the ceiling, right? So now what's this? Let me know in the comments below. I'll tell you, that's a D chord, a version of your D chord. Looking now at a broad view of our picking hand. As stated with the ring finger here, 12th fret, that's a version of our D chord. Now with the ring moved to the 7th fret, we have a version of the A chord. Now with our ring finger, the fifth fret. So for the D, you can think dog. For the, for the A, you can think animal. With our ring finger here, fifth fret, that's another version of the G chord. What about the G? What can we say? Think a gorilla. Now when we're moving the fingers.
fingers to a slightly different position. And we have another D chord. 